Hey, welcome back to Bro Sanchez TV. Today we're going to be doing a quick esoteric decoding of the movie Bird Box. I saw a lot of good decodings online, but a lot of those decodings miss some of the things I'm about to show you today. Um, I was hoping that some of those guys gave the deeper meaning and some of the occult symbolism in the movie. So since I didn't see anybody exposing that, I decided to do a quick video and give you guys the sacred geometrical and occult breakdown of the movie Bird Box. So in order to understand the hidden meaning of the symbolism within the movie Bird Box, you must first understand that all the rituals and initiation ceremonies in the occult are based upon ancient cosmology. It's based upon life and death and rebirth. And one of the traditional rituals that the occult take initiates through to symbolize rebirth is the wearing of the blindfold. And we see that at the beginning of the movie Bird Box, it starts off with everybody blindfolded. In the occult, when they take away any of the senses, it's symbolizing death. So a lot of movies, they take away the ability to speak. In this movie, they take away the ability to see. And this is one of the main rituals that the occult do to symbolize rebirth. So the entire movie is just a reenactment of the cosmic journey of life and death. Also, the creation of humanity. And again, is all founded upon ancient cosmology. And the reason they wear the blindfold in this movie and in the occult is because in ancient spirituality, the spirit has no eyes. The spirit travels the spiritual plane in a merkaba or celestial boat. The boat is symbolic of the soul selling the waters of new. And the boy and girl represents the high and low self. And the reason she didn't name them is for that reason. It's the dual aspect of every human. This also represents man and woman as a species being born from the great mother nature. So the whole movie is about completing this dangerous river journey. And that's called the cosmic journey in Egyptian. This blindfolding ritual is also common in religion. For example, baptism is rebirth. And when you go under the water, you close your eyes. That's a form of blindfolding. The blindfolding and traveling through the water is a form of baptism. But in reality, we all travel blindfolded through the waters of our mother to get to this world. And that's why when she completed the journey, she made it to a sanctuary, a safe sanctuary after a rough journey. That, again, is how a soul into the world as a sperm cell and an egg traveling the chaotic waters, finding itself in a safe sanctuary once the process is complete. The baby finds itself in the arms of its mother in the hospital in a safe place. And that's represented by that sanctuary. The monsters in the movie will not attack you, but they will reflect the deeper things inside of yourself. And basically one of the reasons why we don't see any monsters is because the real monster is the individuals. They're bringing themselves harm. The monster is the mirror. It brings about the deepest things within you and then you perform the action upon yourself. So this is kind of the way the universe reacts to us. You can conjure up a nightmare for yourself in this reality or a heaven. But this movie has a lot of symbolic meanings. The most important thing to take from it is the cosmic journey. In a lot of religions, they say, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And they say that we walk through this narrow valley and it's dark. In other words, you're blindfolded and it's a narrow valley. So in this movie, we can see that narrow valley being a river and she's blindfolded. This is the journey of the soul again with the boat being a Merkaba. And her being in between boy and girl represent the pineal gland in between the left and right brain. The divine feminine within every human and a divine masculine. The reason she didn't give them a name because these two polarities that make up you 
have no name. These are connected to the, the eternal aspect of what we are. Something else I found interesting in the movie is before Tom sacrificed himself, he gave her a necklace and the necklace was none other than a flat earth map because she was getting ready to go on her journey basically to Mount Maru. The sanctuary at the end of the movie represents Mount Maru and her journey to get to that sanctuary, she has to go through a rough river and that's how we make it to the sanctuary or Mount Maru. You enter one of the four rivers and all of the ancestors said that these are rough, rough rivers. But this is a cosmic journey. So the only way you can really enter the sanctuary is in spirit. But they're acting it out in physicality. So it's an esoteric script, meaning that the story relates to the spiritual realm. But you seeing it act out in Hollywood on a physical plane. And that's why I wanted to decode this to give you guys that spiritual interpretation. So Tom gives her a flat earth map before she begins her journey to Maru. He gives her that in the form of a necklace. This is a very sacred symbol. That charm on Tom's necklace represents the spiral of life. And it's also associated with the cosmic journey as well as the ancient cosmos. This movie is all founded on ancient cosmology and the cosmic journey because that is the foundation of all occult ritual and initiation. The bird box is actually the bird cage or Pandora's box or Yahweh's terrarium, Jack in the box or however you want to call it. It's the black stone, the Kaaba stone, which is a box. They could have called it bird cage or bird nest, but they chose bird box for a reason. And the blindfolds are very symbolic because at the end, when she reached the sanctuary, you notice that they was able to take their blindfolds off in comfort, showing that when you finally make it through that rough water and you're born, you open up your eyes in the comfort of your mother's arms. Now, there were people in the movie who were able to take their blindfolds off. Those were basically the representation of the people who had faced their worst fears in his life. People who had been near death. You got people in his life that have been through some of the worst stuff you can imagine. And because of that, they live a better life than most of us. We live every day with these little insecurities and fears. But people who've been close to death and people who've seen their worst fears already, they have nothing to fear. They've faced their worst nightmares already. For most of us, that is death. So the people that was taking their blindfolds off, staring at the face of death, death did not consume them because we're talking just what the Bible say. When you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil. The people that had to wear the blindfolds represent the people living in fear on another level and those crazy lunatics represent like i said those people who are already in the face their worst fears so the two kind of people in the movie you had some that was able to look at the creatures and others that weren't and to me that represent the people that's able to work with the powers that be and conform to the ways of the world and the people that go against the system and stand up against the powers that be we live our life in a shell, in sort of a blindfold, based upon our viewpoints not being popular. Most of our family members, most of the mainstream public, they represent all of the people that fell victim to the creatures. They represent most of the world, chaotic and self-destructive, killing themselves based upon their own fears. So again, the creatures just represent your worst reflection. And most of the world fell victim of those creatures, only but a few who wore the blindfold and it shielded them from the impurities of today's world. People with the truth and people trying to connect and get back one with source. We wear a blindfold in this lifetime. We shield ourselves from all of the evils and trends and desires of this world. And we chase our own heaven. And that's what Mallory represents. She was looking for a sanctuary 
to make it out of all the chaos and madness. And the truth led her to that sanctuary. And the truth is founded on cosmology and the ancient concept of the cosmic journey of the soul. There was a lot of parallels in the movie with a bird being on top of a nest. You had Tom saying when he was little, he climbed the tree and saw the birds on top of the nest. And at the end, when she made it to the sanctuary, that's exactly what she saw. The birds on top of the nest. And that represents the vault of heaven. Whenever we see the bird at the top of the tree on top of the nest, in ancient cosmology, that's called a sacred bird. It became the Christian's Holy Ghost. And it's set on top of the ancient cosmos or on top of the nest. And we can see that the arch is very revered within Freemasonry. So the sanctuary was nothing other than the royal arch. We talk about the royal arch all the time on my channel. We see that once she made it to the sanctuary, she finally gave boy and girl a name because this represent you being conceived. That's why I always tell y'all that the tomb is the womb. The tomb shaped like an arch, so does the womb or the pregnant belly. The tomb is the womb. There is no death, only new beginnings and reincarnations after reincarnations. So as she reached the sanctuary, which is the royal arch, the portal, the gateway, we see her finally named boy and girl. And to back up what I'm saying about the tomb being the womb, when she named them, she named the boy Tom, which translates to tomb. And she names the girl Olympia, which is a burial place for Greek gods. And she names them beneath the royal arch, which is the tomb or the burial mound of the gods. The earth shapes like a huge mound. And at the top of ancient cosmology, we see sacred birds that Mallory saw in the sanctuary. Again, this is all a story of death, rebirth, or reincarnation. We travel through the chaotic waters of new before we're conceived. And once we make it to the sanctuary or the arch inside of our mother's belly, we're safe and we're given a name. So that arch represents you inside of a pregnant belly after completing a rough river journey. As a sperm cell, we travel these rough waters and there's all kind of distractions and other kind of microorganisms along the way to take you off the path. But we reach that egg and we're conceived in the womb and we're safe and we're given a name. And that's what this movie represents. Once she named boy and girl, they become unified. They're no longer separated by these general titles representing their sex. They now have a sense of brother and sister as opposed to boy and girl. Once she names them, it's they're becoming one. All of these members that was part of this movie cast only become unified at the end when reaching the sanctuary. And that's what happens with the journey of the soul and all of the aspects of the self meeting again in the womb of the mother or under the arch and uniting to create the human. So this movie has a deeper meaning, as you can see now. Everything in the occult is based upon the cosmic journey and ancient cosmology. And I got to keep reiterating that so you can see the parallels in the movie. So that completes this quick esoteric breakdown of the movie Bird Box. I'm not gonna talk too much. I think you guys can see the parallels with all of the images on the screen. Share this video, hit the like button, and be on the lookout for more uploads. Thank you guys for tuning in. Peace, Peace. and much love. Much love, love, love.